I played Annie recently, and after the game, I felt like Annie was really strong. However, I wanted to dig a bit deeper and see how strong one of the oldest champions in League of Legends actually was. With Annie seeming like a relic of the past, I really wanted to know, is Annie still viable in Season 13? Annie was released as one of the 17 champions in League's Alpha Test, and although she's been an active champion for almost 15 years, she has been relatively untouched in terms of her design since the early days of the game. Q has always been a point-and-click fireball, her W was always a cone, her E, although it now grants a shield, was always similar, and although Infernal Guardian had a name change to Summon Tibbers, there really hasn't been much done other than some slight balance and graphical updates. I had thought that Annie had forever been dragged down to the unescapable pit that has trapped so many other champions, where the Sarlock digests its prey, relegating them to be supports till the end of time. However, after looking at her percentages, I found that most people still play her mid. Like, what? Who's out here playing Annie mid in 2023? I see you, everyone, watching this video. Right now, her popularity is at an all-time low. She's the 12th least picked champion according to OP.GG, and her win light is also not looking too hot, sitting at a 49.01% overall. However, win rate isn't everything, so let's take a further dive into this. First, let's look at the pros of picking Annie. Let's count to five! Can you count to five? Great! You've mastered Annie's passive, probably one of the most defining factors about Annie in terms of gameplay. If you are like me and can't count that high, that's okay. There's a little indicator below her health bar that shows you what charge you're on. Her stun is one of the most useful tools and something that's so easy to utilize. Just cast four spells, and the fifth one stuns. Boom! Easy. It's extremely effective when matched with Tibbers or even your W for stuns on multiple champions. You can easily win a fight before the fight even starts if you get a good Tibbers on the enemy team. <laughs> Coupled with her stun, when you take a look at Annie's ability damage, it's actually insane. Looking through the league roster, I was able to find a champion that is most similar to Annie on their base kits. And weird enough, it's Cassidy. What? Both have a point and click damaging ability and both have an AoE cone ability. Cassidy is one of the champions you see and you think scaling. This champ's gonna scale and he's gonna scale hard. And then you look at Annie's abilities and they scale better. They have a higher overall base damage on the Q, as well as 10% better scaling, and the higher base damage on the cone and equal ability scaling. That, with Annie having half of the base cooldowns, just shows how much damage she can deal in the late game. The last major thing she has going for her is the simplicity of her gameplay. Don't quote me on this, but Riot seems to have intentionally kept her simple so that she's easier to pick up for new players and has a lower skill cap needed to master her gameplay. Like I said earlier, can you count to five? One, two, three, four. Boom, that's it. You'll be playing around her passive almost all game. If you're mid, you'll be farming with your Q because it's way better than your auto attacks. It refunds the manas on kills to minions and helps build your passive stacks so once you get charged up, it's time for some trading, at least at the surface level play. Now, let's go into some of the cons of playing Annie. You wanna play too? It'll be fun. First and foremost, Annie's early game is really weak. There, I said it. This is coming from someone that plays her rather infrequently, but still, you compare her to other champions with similar roles, and they just seem to do it better. She also has a massive range disadvantage, so she isn't great against most mages, as they can always just stay away from you when they know your stun is up, and assassins like Zed, Kiana, and LeBlanc can easily burst you down. Even as support against mage and poke supports, you have the same problem. Mages and poke supports will just outrange you and make it hard to trade, and enchanters usually don't want anything to do with you, and they'll just sit behind their ADC while they poke you down. Next up, I want to talk about her base scaling. Although her ability scaling is really high, Annie has some absolutely atrocious base scaling. She has one of the lowest base HPs at 594, as well as one of the lowest base scaling HPs in the game with only 102 per level. I know what you might be thinking, but Annie's a mage. She doesn't need to have high base scaling, but I don't think that's completely correct. It is true that she is a mage, but other mages with lower HP scaling also have the benefit of a far, far larger range. If I was going to compare him to Cassid again, Cassidin has a base HP of 646 and HP scaling of 119. This puts him at a total of 2,669 at level 18, while Annie ends up at 2,328. She also has an absolutely abysmal starting armor at 17, with a saving grace of good armor scaling at 5.2, but that leaves her middle of the road at level 18. 
so for a majority of the game you're just going to be super squishy. And to top it all off, the piece de resistance, she has one of the worst starting MRs and MR scaling. It's not like a super important thing because most people's MR scaling isn't great, but come on Riot, Annie needs something, right? Now this next part's gonna feel like deja vu, but I'm also going to put Annie's simplicity as a con as well. She's a very straightforward and easy gameplay, meaning that she loses out on a lot of mobility that other champions has. She walks at you, simple as that. She has a speed buff on her E, but she primarily needs to focus on her summer spells to get a good engage from Vision. And with a horrific quality of life nerf making her tibbers come out slower, there is so much time to counterplay what used to be a guaranteed engage. It's only 0.25 seconds, but if you try and catch someone with a max range tibbers, that cast time is enough to let them walk out of the damage zone and not get stunned at all. If you're liking the video, please like and subscribe. If you disagree or agree with anything I've said so far, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Going into this, I thought I knew where Annie was at, but I'm not so sure anymore. Some people might disagree, but I don't think Annie is viable in Season 13, at least for now. She doesn't seem to be in the best spot for a burst mage. She has to be so close to the enemy team, has a lot of counterplay, and with hypermobility of League today, her whole kit seems to be quite underwhelming. You have the option to build tankier, but that means you lose out on her massive scaling, and when you build her more bursty, you can possibly be taken out before you even get into the fight. When you get behind, it's almost impossible to catch back up, but also, you don't start bursting other champions down until you get at least two items, so getting ahead can be difficult. I've compared her to Kassadin all video, but the difference between her and him is Kassadin has the mobility and an extra damaging ability to keep him relevant in the game where Annie doesn't. There are obviously people that can take advantage of her with good macro play and it shows in the win rate. 49% isn't great, but it's not awful. I just don't think she matches up favorably in the meta right now. There's so many champions that can do what she does and do it better. I played a couple games as Annie mid and they felt quite bad for some of the reasons that I listed in the con section. Sorry to disappoint all those Annie fans out there, but I'm sorry. Annie, you're not okay. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you later.